Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we have gotten um, one system to do from the user Trollerigi, um on Discord so a massive thank you to them for sending their system in. But yeah guys if you want to send in your own simulations to this series make sure to either join my Discord server link in the description and you can upload it in one of our dedicated chats there. Or let me know the name of your system down in the comments and I can go ahead and find it on the workshop. But please note sending it in the comments may be less reliable of getting it in as it could get lost, it could go in my spam box because YouTube's weird with the spam box stuff but yeah just keep that in mind but yeah guys with that all out of the way let's get into this so yeah we've got one system to do today from the user troll Ouija. Um, and yeah their system is called the um bronexo or Bro bronexo system i believe so i got it all um, searched up here ready to go so let's go ahead and see what they have been prepared for us today so here we go so let's just wait for it to load and see what we have got whoa that's a lot of reading okay we have got a very big load of reading that is that's a lot of stuff so we can go through it as we um go to each planet so here we go so here is the star itself so head all the way down in here so right so located in the galaxy ic1101 so the largest galaxy um found or one of them anyway and it's obviously the background sort of reminds me because that galaxy is quite a yellowy orange color so that's quite cool how he's um done that i like that um so yeah um it comprises the electro weak star uh bronexo here I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. Um, along with six major planets, an asteroid belt, and two dwarf planets. The system was reached in 61,159 AD in the Strange New Worlds mission towards IC 1101. That'd be pretty cool. Um, a mission like that actually okay so the star itself i'm not gonna say its name again because i'm just gonna butcher it so yeah here it is here it is actually a pulsar object as well so the central star of the um, system it is an electro weak star this means at the core of the star there is a region with the volume of an apple that contains two earth masses that's pretty crazy and is converting quarks to leptons through the electroweak force. Like a pulsar, it sends out two massive amounts of radiation in the form of two large beams coming out of the poles. That is awesome. I like that. It's cool how he's um, teaching us some stuff about oh, just all the, how it all works and stuff as well. Right, so there we go. That is our star. Well, the closest thing to a star anyway. So that's the main object in here. Now, moving on to the first of the planets. So here we go. Whoa, what is going on here? Um, I guess we may have to... Can we, can we right-click that to just open it? So is it, I think it's just a planet surrounded with, <laughs> there it is, that's the gas giant, so we can just get a look of it through there since it seems to be smoking up for some reason, so maybe maybe he clicked play before he saved it and it messed it up or something, but yeah, there's the planet there, so that's just a full look of it, it's just a hot um, random gas giant there, so yeah, okay, this planet is um, the closest celestial body to the star, it is on an extremely eccentric orbit and it's slightly larger than the moon. It is really, or it is really Io on asteroids. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, because its immense heat is powered by the squeezing and stretching the star gives it. So, pretty crazy stuff. Yes, yeah, a gas giant. So, it's slightly different to Io in that regard as well, since it is a gas giant. And then it has also got one moon all the way over here as well. So, here we go. And this is um, a small little purple asteroid. Check that out there. So, that is, that is pretty crazy. That little purple asteroid there. Very, very hot. But yeah, it's weird how that's um, smoking up like that. I mean, I would delete it, but it would delete the asteroid belt as well. So, and if there's any rings in the system, so we can come back to it um, if once we've got through the whole system, if we want. So, right, there we go. So, moving out. Oh, they're really giving me hard challenges with the pronunciations today of all these crazy names. So, right, the next object is this one. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not even going to try it. I'm just going to butcher it. And it. Whoa, okay, so it looks like we've got the same problem again with the object smoking up so i'm just going to go and remove that stuff so here it is this is what it's actually supposed to look like so okay so it, um this is probably has the weirdest name of all i think they were really weird names i mean that's gonna be quite hard to um not butcher saying them but um yeah there we go so this is um weirdest name of all it's a five mass mini neptune and has one asteroid moon so there we go we are not seeing any asteroid moons though so maybe maybe something's See, this, this just does go to show Universe Sandwich may be a little glitchy here. I mean, some of it, maybe he forgot to put the moon in, but with all it all smoking up and stuff like that, we know that is uh, probably down to the glitches and stuff. I don't know if he did play it or not. Maybe he did. So, obviously, we can't really point fingers there. Um, but, yeah, there is that object done. So, now moving on to the next one. So, where where is that object? So, we've done, we've done that one. We've done this one. Okay, so... Okay, so we've done both of those, yeah. I'm just trying to... So, Accurate is the next one. So, th okay, here we go. So, I'm just getting all mixed up with all these uh, names. So, okay, here's the next object. So, here we go. It looks to be a per a very dark purple gas giant. Quite a nice shade of purple um, that has got. Let's just get it on a flashlight. Oh, okay, there we go. 
oh, that's weird how it's purple with um, realistic on. Is that just due to the... I'm guessing it's due to the weak starlight at this distance. It just makes it look very dim. But yeah, there we go. So that's quite a cool sort of purple colour to it with the starlight. But in reality, that's what it actually looks like there. So that is um, a crit... I think that's how he says. This is the largest planet in the system. It is a major heavyweight in the planetary mass, clocking in at a whopping 7.9 Jupiter masses. If it were just 65% more massive, it would become a brown dwarf, achieving simple nuclear fusion in its core. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff there. And then onto the moons. So, we'll just um, go through all these quickly. So, here we go. So there we go. Oh, that one looks pretty interesting. We'll get a closer look at this one. So, it appears to be an all ocean world. Um, as we can see here, with some look awesome looking red clouds. So there we go. That's it with the starlight on. That's quite a cool view of the gas giant there um, as well. But there is that one. So there we go. And now moving on to the next moon out here. So another um, default looking one. And then a bunch more of those. So let's just keep, um, keep checking them all. So there we go. We'll just quickly hover through all of those guys. So there we go. All right. And there's the last one. All right. So there we go. That is all of those ones done. Okay, so now, oh, and then I'm actually going back to that, um, where was it? So, uh, okay, so it has this moon. So where, where's that moon? So there it is. So this was the one with the water. Yeah, so this is the largest and most important moon. Um, it is an ocean moon with red skies. It is warmed by the same mechanism that uh, boils or broils um, that other planet, but uh, less extreme, allowing it to maintain a pleasant climate and unicellular marine life. Pretty cool stuff there. So there we go. Right, now heading out to the uh, next object out here. So it is a core. I think that's how you said this one. So this is a small dwarf planet. It has a very strange color, and that's because of the radioactive rocks um, it contains due to the constant bombardment of radiation from the main star. Expeditioners have reportedly mined very rare and useful materials here. Pretty cool. So let's go on uh, Studio. So that's what it actually looks like. So it's got a, a lot of green covering the surface here. I mean, it's got those weird uh, bits at the top. Now that's definitely down to glitches. We see this in a lot of systems in the most recent version of um, Universe Simox 2. So, that, yeah, that weird top bit, that that's um, that's just the game uh, messing us around there. Um, but, yeah, there we go. So there is that object. Now, next up, we have got the planet um, Skus down here. So here we go. So here it is. So oh, it's a, um, it looks to be a Titan under there with a greenish atmosphere. That's looking pretty cool. So let's actually open this up and have a little peek underneath that. So I believe that is a Titan texture underneath with a cool green atmosphere. It's cool how you can see the surface through it as well. So that's very nice. So there we go. So this um, has just kept its status as a planet, but it's worth it because this little world is a very interesting. It is a warmer version of Titan with ethane lakes instead of methane lakes. And a lot of methane in the atmosphere has resulted in a more bluish tinge. It has a moon called Oram. So um, is that where's the uh, moon? There's a bunch of moons here. So we'll quickly go ahead and uh, view all the moons. So there we go. I'm not finding that Oram moon. Where's, where's that? Is it further out maybe? Oh, there we go. So I didn't see it when we came in. So here's the moon. So it's quite far out from the uh, planet as well. There we go. It kind of reminds me of uh, Earth and Moon distance just by uh, first glance there. But it's probably way off that. And this moon has a moon as well. There we go. Pretty cool. So that's got a moon of a moon. Right, awesome stuff. So now moving on to the next object down here. So that's Phylopose, I think is how you say that one. So yeah, and yet again, the massive apologies if I have butchered any of the pronunciations in here. I probably butchered every single one of them. But yeah, these are pretty challenging uh, names, I would say, though. But yeah, here we go. So here is the next object. So it's an all-frozen ocean world. Or see, some of well, some of it's um, got ocean, some of it hasn't. So it's um, a mix between water and ice, this one. Okay. So, okay, so um, this is a big, fat titan. It's similar to Scus, but with a thinner atmosphere and fuss colder. The methane lakes on Phalopos are scattered everywhere, so if you're looking for a methane drink, you don't need to walk far. But um, it is particularly across the asteroid belt, which isn't good. Ah, yeah, it was, yeah. If we just zoom out, the asteroid belt was here um, if we reload the simulation. So, yeah, we can do that just afterwards just to see what it looks like, but we'll just get through all the planets first. So, um, okay, now moving on to the, yeah, the next object. So there's Phylopose, that's quite a cool trail colour it has there as well. So this is the next object. So watching the drama from afar, um, Isango is the second last planet orbiting uh, Bronix over there. It's not very special other than the fact it has a huge ring. Okay, so this one does have rings, so we definitely need to come back and visit this once we've gone through all the um, objects. So ring formation is still a mystery. Don't confuse Asango with Isok. Yeah, the, the names are very confusing <laughs> for me in here. So there we go. Right, and then the last object, the last planet found orbiting, it is a mega Earth measuring a whopping 13 Earth masses. There we go. So there's its stats there. So looking quite a nice atmosphere colour. It's quite, a, a, in general as well, very nice choice of colour on there. I think those colours go very well together with the atmosphere. Really like the way this one looks. So um, the last planet, 
Um, it appears reddish in white light due to fallings. Oh, yeah, I know, I know about the fallings. That's what Pluto has, uh, making its brownish areas there. But, yeah, there we go. So that's what it looks like with the starlight. So very, very dim here. We can also check its stats as well. But, yeah, um, kind of organic, uh, a kind of organic material that party covers its surface. So that's the fallings. It has two major moons, the second in which has a delightful blue color. So there we go. So onto the moons. So we'll just open up in the menu here. So there's the first moons and then the second moon. Well, that's a pretty uh, pretty nice looking moon there with a nice sort of blue um, tint to it there. But yeah, there we go. So that does it for the system. Before we finish up, we are going to revisit that planet with the ring just to see what it looks like. Yes, we did see... So, so where are we? Okay, so there is the asteroid belt that was supposed to be here. But yeah, there we go. So let's just uh, head all the way down here. Okay, so where's that planet? Yeah, here we go. So final pause. So this is the one that was in the asteroid belt. So as we can see, it is surrounded by a lot of asteroids. We can see it's sitting right in the middle of the belt there. It does look really cool in the starlight as well. Look at that. That does look really awesome. So yeah, there we go. So I just want to just check the star itself. So yeah, the star is purple. Okay, right. Awesome. So we didn't really actually zoom into the star. But yeah, there we go. Right, and now the next one was th was this was the one with the rings, wasn't it? Here we go. So, so yeah, there we go. There's the rings we were missing out on. So there we go. So that's it in its full glory right there. So Isango. So there we are. Right, now let's get a lineup of all the objects before we uh, finish up here. So we can see yeah, a lot of the objects are smoking up and stuff. We're just going to go ahead and remove um, all of that stuff there. And then we'll go back to studio mode. So there we go. Right, so here are all of the planets. My favorite, I think, without a doubt, is probably this one. I just love the way the colors blend together. I really, really like the chosen colors. I think the atmosphere looks great. I think it's a really, really good um, combination of colors. Very, very nice indeed. But I'd also um, also um, point out, I think, these two as well. Yeah, the uh, the red ocean world here, the red atmosphere, red cloud ocean world, and also the uh, green titan. I think those two are quite um, cool as well. And yeah, there we go. So that is the lineup of all of the objects there. There was that ultra hot planet we saw at the start. And then all the way down to the little pulsar at the very end, which is only bigger than one of the asteroids in here. So yeah, very, very small indeed. Little star there, all purple. But yeah, there we go. So that does it for this system, guys. So yeah, very, very nice indeed. And yeah, that was the Bronexo system. I'm really, really sorry if I have uh, been saying that wrong the whole time. But yeah, pretty challenging uh, words there. Um, but yeah, there we go. Pretty unusual as well. But um, yeah, with that all out of the way, guys, a massive thank you for watching today's video. And again, a massive thank you to the user who sent this in. So Trollweegee um, on Discord here. And also, guys, like I said, if you want to um, send in your own systems, make sure to follow the instructions I said at the start of the video. So that's either Discord or let me know in the comments. But yeah, guys, with that all out of the way, let's see if we can go for 30 likes on today's video of checking out our subscriber solar system. And yeah, this was episode 127 of this series now. So we're getting close to the uh, 130 mark. Um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, with that all out of the way, guys, make sure you all have a great day. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.